Hello everybody and welcome once again to Daniel Sun's Real Tech Mod Pack. This episode, actually what I was looking at was um, some more features of Pneumatic Graph Repressurized. So, and also some ways of improving the generation of potatoes. So let's have a look at the potatoes, what we're doing with the potatoes first of all. So potatoes have been going on a multi-farm like this. I've been trying to pipe some of the pollution coming out of the generator into here, like that. And the potatoes are supposed to be growing. And, and I've got greenhouse glass from stringing seasons above it. But actually, it doesn't seem to be that efficient. You can see these are not really growing at any particular rate. Very fairly slowly, you can see the one just growing up there. And this has actually got a few potatoes in it. And it's got, it's got enough fertilizer to go in here. Let's go down and have a look downstairs now at actually what's happening or what the state current state of it is. So potatoes are over here. Let's just stand on this. Hopefully there's no power above my head. <laughs> and you can see there's... Oops, I'll just pick that potato up because I'm a magnetic arm. Let's just turn my magnetic armor off. So I've got... So I can't read it from... Let's just go a bit nearer. 24,000 potatoes which is actually not bad but i've been running potatoes for quite a long time oops <laughs> i press shift on that let's get out of the way now because some more potatoes are coming and it's been running a long time without actually gen and generating any power whatsoever so i've not thought about improving that so let's go and have a look at that first of all and the one thing i want to show you now is the jet boots now the base is over there and the jet boots have two different modes I'm going to come back in a second when it's daytime. So we can have a look at the jet boots by pressing U to go up here, and then we've got jet boots. So they're in the, they're basically turned off, and I've got this band to control F to turn, enable the jet boots, and building mode is set to shift F. So let's have a quick look at those two modes, just, just in case you missed that in some previous episode. So we've turned that on with control F, jet boots are enabled, we've got builder's mode on so we can just go straight up like that we can just hover and because I've got an aerial interface here you'll notice that the um, on the right hand side of the status display you'll notice that the air pressure in the boots isn't changing it's it's actually going staying at 10 so let's turn those off again and there's this time let's enable the um, non builders mode so what we're going to do with that one is just turn that press shift F and it should say jet boots Builders mode is disabled. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fly. So all you do is you press space and you look in the direction you want to fly. Oops, I've got to turn them on for tool, haven't I? <laughs> Try that again. And you can just fly across here and you'll see that base is about 1,200 blocks away. So you can go up and you can go down. Now if you look at the, the status display that the actual jet boots are using air pressure. But it's being recharged all the time. And it's being recharged by the aerial interface. And it doesn't actually take very long now to actually get home. So we're traveling uh, pretty fast, I would say. We can even fly through these things over here. It actually makes a good noise as well. <laughs> so when I want to land, all I have to do is basically point down to the ground and press space. Like that. Turn the boots off. And there we are. Jet boots disabled. Yeah, I was playing with trains. I've been playing with trains for a bit. <laughs> These things are a bit strange. I have to be on teleporting rail. Ah, oh, that sounds like something's just happened. <laughs> that shouldn't have happened. What's happened here? I can hear some pressure leaking. Now, I haven't shown you this yet. This is basically. Um, pressure's coming out of here at the end. Okay not broken is it it's very near to the top so we'll just actually reduce the pressure a little bit here just in case just in case it's causing it I've set it up to here to be 20 bar let's just change this to 19.5 bar and that will reduce the pressure here now this one here are these electrostatic compressors and the way you set them up is you basically set up a grid of um, iron bars like this and they are then connected to or you place on top of those the electrostatic compressors and then you go down underneath the ground I've actually gone down four blocks here with iron bars and you just place these on top of that like that and then everything's connected together and the pressure gets fed through here like this 
and eventually ends up into this so it's got plenty of pressure 90.5 now as you can see and the and the this drone the protector drone will actually go along and come along here and charge itself up and into here as you saw maybe before i got five speed upgrades got a security upgrade so it doesn't explode and uh, some volume upgrades to keep it up to pressure or keep the increase the amount of air that it contains and the dispenser upgrade which allows the drone to land on it and gives you those bar type effects and it actually the only time actually I had one slight problem is it actually ran out of ammo <laughs> it's actually used up one and it uses up quite a reasonable amount of ammo because there's quite a lot of mobs coming down here they like villagers of course and they they basically spawn down across here like that and then come in and try and attack they can't get through the fence and the and this drone basically knocks them out and any they get past get caught by this uh, sentry turret here that isn't used too much fortunately but it did catch me out a couple of times now the other thing you'll see in here is I have got a sensor a universal sensor let's go and build a couple of those well I'll show you why in a second they're quite neat actually they've got lots of features on them I wonder if I've got everything I need in here no I haven't I'll come back in a second when I've got everything I need what we need is some of these purple plastic some light blue plastic some redstone now let's, put, let's just assemble this to start with it's quite straightforward just like that we can get two of these so I'll put these two down here and what I've done over here as you may have noticed already I've set one up and I'm going to set up another one and this one is connected to a pressure reducer or an advanced regulated tube like this so the advanced regulated tube as you can see it's got a threshold of 11 which gives us two bar we don't need much pressure for this so I'm going to put these two sensors down here like that and then I'm going to oh they actually connect together like I didn't know they did that okay good so I'll put down some redstone in front of them like this uh, probably not a good idea because <laughs> it's connecting so what I'd have to do is then put down some uh, some relays just can get some relays and just put those down I should have a few in this chest here six we need three don't we we have to put them in the right direction which of course is the direction you you're going to so let's just stand up on here like that and then put these three down like that that's good so they're now three separate signals and what you can then do here is this one's going around because it's got a, a dispenser upgrade in here I need to build a couple more dispenser upgrades so I shall do that and come back again when I've got these two prepared so we basically just install an, an ejector upgrade in each one of these and then you can have, then, then it highlights this button here so you can then highlight this button well, there's another. Th you see what's happening here is as thunder is lightning's hitting this fairly frequently actually and built increasing the power as you may have heard. Anyway, let's go back to this one. <laughs> Bit distracting actually when that happens. So we go down here to world and we can set a global variable on here and I'm going to call this one signal two. And if you know anything at signal, uh, that's signal isn't it? <laughs> I can't spell signal. Hold on a second. Signal. I can't spell it. O S I G. I thought it was looking strange. Signal two, like that. And then we can look at this one. This is set to signal one, and this is set to signal two. And then we're going to set this one to signal three. So we're pushing an upgrade into there first of all, and then we'll set this to signal three. For global variable. Press escape and then that's set up and these are now returning round. Now you can program a remote. You see, you know, notice here I've got a remote. So what I'm going to do is just program this, show you what the remote does first of all. So let's just come up here and then turn the remote on. And then you've got these checkboxes. You click that one, turns on channel one. Click this one, it turns on channel two. Let's go back again. Let's turn that one off and these two on. It'll just turn on channel three so let's go and have a look at this this is actually a standard program I haven't written it I will be honest and I'll show you where we get it from first of all you look in the book and strangely enough we look in the book and you look under remote so let's right click the, the book here let's go to the index and then let's go and look for remote now that should be in the second section because we've already done this so P and R there we go remote so with the remote you can create your own GUI Remote controls drones or universal sensors via global variables. 
by global variable ma manipulation. Note that universal sensors, you can use the remote to create wireless redstone. This is basically what we've just done. So to start um, creating a GUI, you shift right click the remote, which opens up the editor. Filling in the, uh, the window works similarly to how the programmer works. Basically, you just drag the widgets from the right hand side and to the main panel on the left. To copy a widget, you middle click and drag the an existing widget. To an edge, edit the properties of a widget, right click the widget. For example, a button with the following uh, will open up the following window. So that's what a, that's what it looks like. So we'll have a look at this program here, and it actually tells you here you can use to actually debug things. You can use a label and you can specify that. But there's the last bit here. Where has it gone to? Drop down widgets in the example here. So here we've got this one here, and it basically allows you to go to the you can click this one, this layout, it's an external link to paste bin, and you can bring the program in. So let's have a look at the program first of all. Um, right click it, no shift right click it, and here you can see here you can import from the paste bin. So you just paste the link into here, so what, and that basically creates your remote. So here we've got these things, so we've got checkboxes, labels. You can actually be quite smart, you can drag along a label along here like this and then we can say this was what do we want to say right click this one so the value of this text wants to be the value of the signal so let's just let's go back to the book and just make sure we've typed all of this incorrectly go back to the book here let's go back a couple of pages labels so you need dollar braces and then um angle brackets variable name. i think variable name doesn't actually do, do that so let's just see if this works So, shift right click the remote again, right click this. So the text is, and it's, and I think it was dollar hash one like this, if I'm not mistaken, and then press enter on that one. And the enabling variable we won't look at today, and then you've got this variable here. So if I turn this on, I press escape down to now, I right click it and turn this one on it's actually got this variable channel one here set as you can see we can do that of course for all of these and that actually is um is a position or a relative position it's a coordinate description anyway i'm looking i'm going to play with some of this i've got some stuff i wanted to play with uh, i'm not sure which program i've got it in this one was actually some stuff that was already done but this one i've been looking at how to do this now i'm using the current the newest version of uh, pneumatic craft repressurized as you can see i've got the widgets and where you are now if it works nicely with the mouse you can scroll it and it keeps the position where the mouse is so for instance if we scroll it down here this is roughly those bits stay where they are so you can see nicely this is working very nicely now as you can see quite easy to scroll the, the picture around like that Anyway, whenever we get all of this out, and it's not that easy, I'll show you how it how it all works. So that was going to be the main topic of this episode, but I decided because I don't fully understand it, I'm not going to do that today. Um, I haven't done anything with this yet. Oh, I did actually. I put down some crop sticks down here, as you may have noticed. Now it's night time at the moment, so these these crops aren't growing. Oh, you see, I look, you just see a little green spark there. And another one. That means that the crop sticks are giving these things a bit of accelerated growth. So we're then picking stuff up in here, like that. And what I haven't got is any checks to see if this inventory is full, for example, because it would be a sensible thing to do that. Because the drone was sitting down there, and I was going, "Why is a drone sitting over here and not picking up the stuff?" The reason it was, it was the, this this chest was full, and I haven't extracted anything, so it was not working. So it stops. You can see that in the debugger of the programmer. The next thing I'm going to have a look at, as I was talking about potatoes, wasn't I? So let's have a look at potatoes first of all. Um, I actually was looking for. I was building. Yeah, I know what I was doing. I was building new press. Let's look for potatoes. Let's spell it right again, which you can't. So the potatoes. If we look for the uses of these, right? Click it. And then we can basically come along here and we should be able to say, okay, we can make different crafting things. Well, I'm not interested in crafting. What I am interested in is um, 
I'm not planting them villager trades. Yeah, villager trades good for it. things like that. What I wanted to do was to find this, the invest industrial fermenter, because that gives me gives ethanol. So if you look, then left click the uh, the industrial fermenter here, right click it. Sorry, you should then see the different recipes that the industrial fermenter can do. And I've got five pages of those. So we've got sugar cane, we've got melon slices, and this gives us basically these are 80, apples are 80, and potatoes, if I remember, it was also 80. So all of these fruits are giving us 80. And these ones here are rustic ones, but they don't work in the what I'm going to show you next. But the raspberries from Natura and the, the blueberries and the blackberries all seem to work as well. So you can, and the malabris. So all of the Natura stuff does work, but I'm we're going to have a look at that in a second. So what I've done is I basically copied something that Arthur Beerstand did in one of his episodes, and that was to set up some closures like this. Now one one of these closures has got in it a raspberry bush. Another one's got in a potato. This one's got sugar cane in it. This one's got uh, cotton seed in it from Nature again, and this one has got a pumpkin, a melon seed in it. And now the melon seed will grow melons so if we have a look at that again and look at this will grow melons like that we have a look at the uses of melons we can basically use a metal press to slice these into nine different melons using the metal press unpacking mold i've not actually done the metal press unpacking mold it's normally used for things like cutting blocks into ingots and stuff like that but in this case we can do put it onto a press here and i'm feeding it out of the items we're using a covered conveyor belt it's not an extracting conveyor belt just a covered conveyor belt and then pushing it into the um, metal press here and then in here we've got an empty chest so what I wanted to do is to compare the speed of these things let's just turn them on you can use a lever to turn these off and on as you wish and then this and the, the plants start to grow as you can see you're getting a melon out of here like this we'll come back in a few seconds and see how that's going on in fact you could just hear the press go down here so we've got nine melons in here already so we then compare that to anything else we've got in here this has given me one seed this has given me two sugar cane this is two potatoes and this has given one raspberry so you can see fairly immediately that the, the, the melons are going to be by far the fastest in fact they are by far the fastest they may, but I'm not sure yet. There goes in the second one. So we've already got 18 melons now, compared to the other plants that we're actually growing. Two seeds, four sugar canes. Sugar canes are not bad for potatoes. So potatoes and sugar cane are about the same, but melons are. Let's have a look. Four times faster, at least four and a half times faster. So what I might be doing is I might be using this setup changing it for doing producing biodiesel uh, as we've been doing in the as we've been doing replace the potatoes maybe put a tree farm in there and use the tree farm to make some uh, car charcoal I think let's get out of here it's a bit noisy villagers are being villagers and talking all the time <laughs> Now, when I press F1, because I'm using the updated version of uh, uh, Pneumatic Craft Repressurize, the status screen properly disappears so we don't get this great status screen anymore, which is great. Thank you very much for all these fixes and changes, Dash. They're very great. So, until next time, I wish you all the best. I'm not sure when next time's going to be, but it'll be um, maybe in a week or so time. Anyway, until then, bye for now.